Hello everyone, my name is Trisha Reddy and I'm an internal medicine resident at the Ascension Providence Rochester Hospital Wayne State University Internal Medicine Program. Today I'm going to be talking to you about our QI initiative, Standardizing Treatment of Inpatient Asymptomatic Hypertension. Hypertension is a frequent occurrence during hospitalization for any medical problem and physicians are routinely called to treat hypertensive events despite the asymptomatic nature of patients. Although guidelines for outpatient management of hypertension are available, management strategies for asymptomatic inpatient hypertension are lacking. Without a standardized approach, physicians treat asymptomatic hypertension utilizing inconsistent strategies including intravenous antihypertensives. The use of IV hyper antihypertensives has shown to have adverse effects that are associated with increased morbidity and mortality as well as longer length of stay. The aim of this project is to standardize the approach to inpatient asymptomatic hypertension and minimize use of IV antihypertensives by 25% in 6 months. Using the IHI model, a quality improvement project was initiated. Root cause analysis was done and revealed a lack of standard approach to managing asymptomatic hypertension amongst hospital physicians and residents. PDSA cycle was used to test the change. For PDSA 1, a standardized approach algorithm was created and residents were educated about criteria for assessing symptoms, any contributing factors, secondary hypertension, and if they had a history of hypertension or were on home meds that were not resumed. For PDSA 2, we expanded education for the nursing staff and provided them with the treatment flowchart. We also included the pharmacy department in our initiative to form a multidisciplinary approach. For PDSA 3, we included nurse practitioners in our education and provided them with our standardized algorithm as well. Here is the algorithm that we used and distributed amongst the residents, nurses, and PA and P admission services. Patients who were found to have elevated blood pressure in the inpatient setting were assessed to see whether the patient was symptomatic, whether there were any other contributing factors to this elevated blood pressure such as pain, anxiety, or agitation, whether the patient was on any home antihypertensives that were being held. The blood pressure was then repeated in 15 minutes to confirm. Patients who were found to still have elevated blood pressure and who are asymptomatic, we recommend introducing oral ACE inhibitors, calcium channel blockers, or thiazide diuretics. Prior to PDSA-1, 24 charts were analyzed and over 58% of patients had received inappropriate IV antihypertensives. Post-intervention, 31 charts were analyzed and showed a 32.5% reduction in IV antihypertensive use. Prior to PDSA-2, another 36 patient charts were analyzed and 25% of patients had received inappropriate IV antihypertensives. Post-intervention, 21 charts were analyzed and showed an 11% reduction in IV antihypertensive use. For PDSA-3, 19 charts were analyzed pre-intervention, and 53% of these patients had received inappropriate IV antihypertensives. Following intervention, 12 charts were analyzed, and 42% of patients had received inappropriate IV antihypertensives. Our post-intervention analysis is ongoing, and although data suggests a promising decrease in the use of inappropriate IV antihypertensives, it has been inconsistent, and sustainability will become a challenge. Our project led to the implementation of a standardized algorithm, thus decreasing inappropriate use of IV antihypertensives and minimizing the cost. Management of asymptomatic hypertension in the hospital begins with addressing contributing factors such as pain or anxiety, then reviewing held home medications. 
With the implementation of a standardized algorithm, we found some success in the reduction of use of IV antihypertensives. Working with a multidisciplinary team led to a greater impact of our efforts. Our next steps include implementing the algorithm in the EMR system to have an alert to clarify when IV antihypertensives are indicated and when other options should be reviewed. We plan to continue our multidisciplinary efforts with the pharmacy and EMR staff along with the new admission PA and P service. Re-education throughout the year will also be implemented to improve sustainability. Thank you.